Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just dropped a surprise update, macOS Monterey 12.5.1. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that you're going to need to know about this update, including open core legacy patching news for unsupported Macs. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. The 12.5.1 update was released on August 17th at 12 noon central daylight time. And this set of updates was different than normal because Apple on the macOS side did not release an associated Big Sur security update or a Catalina update or Safari updates. On the iOS side, it was also different too because they just released iOS and iPadOS 15.6.1. There's no tvOS, HomePod OS, but on the watchOS side, 8.7.1 was released, but only for Series 3 watches because it was fixing a crashing issue on that particular hardware model. Our demonstration update Mac today is a 2020 M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. Once we get into software update, we should see the update show up here just like this here. And the update came in at 1.18 gigabytes. Once we started the download here, this is the actual smallest update since Mac OS Monterey was released. And we can take a look at that here in my size chart. I show you every single size, because remember the way the updates work for Mac OS Big Sur and Monterey is, is that they only will install what your system needs. So for example, if you're at 12.3, it's gonna be 2.3 gigabytes. If you've never installed any updates, it's gonna be 4.5 gigabytes. Because it's gonna include all the fixes and security fixes in all the previous updates here. How long did it take to install the 12.5.1 update? Well, this update was the fastest yet for macOS Monterey. The preparing time was only seven minutes. And then when it restarted to actually apply the update, 16 minutes in total for a total time from preparation to installation to usable desktop, only 23 minutes. So that's the fastest yet. Now let's go over the build version for 12.5.1. The build version changed to 21G83. And I always go over the build version just in case you were on a beta version or an RC version and you wanted to make sure that you're on the same release version but for this update there was no beta releases and there was no RC so there's only going to be one build version for the 12.5.1 update. How much space did the 12.5.1 update take? You can open up about this Mac and then click on the storage tab and then I keep track of what the Mac OS system is in size before the update. So before I started the update it was 15.4 too, and I check if it gets bigger or smaller after the update. In this situation, it was exactly the same. The update was very small. So what it does is it downloads all the files needed, makes the changes, installs those changes, and then deletes the update files after, and there's nothing left over to take up any extra space. I always keep track of the M1 firmware update and the T2 Intel Bridge OS updates. And this is the reason why, for example, in the 12.5.1 update, the M1 firmware was not updated. It was the same as the 12.5 update. If you notice it did not change, that is normal. And sometimes Apple does that, but that's why I keep track. Now, if you have an Intel T2, you did get a new Bridge OS version, a 16.066, and that was an increase over the 12.5 update. Now, why is this stuff important? I'm also going to be keeping track of the iBoot version and I'll show you what that looks like here. This is important to keep track of because if you're using beta versions on M1, this here is an example of what can happen in this situation. This MacBook Pro has a system firmware version that is not in alignment with the OS loader version. The OS loader version is whatever the, the Mac version that you're using and that can change. For example, if you're using Big Sur, the OS loader, loader version will change and if you're using Mac OS Monterey, it'll show whatever the loader version is that you're loading for the OS version. Now, when you're on the latest version of Mac OS, like Monterey, this should be in alignment with the system firmware version. But look how we're on 8419, which is actually Ventura's system firmware version. And that's because on the 12.5 RC release, Apple put the Ventura firmware version on the 12.5 Monterey release and it updated anybody that had the 12.5, the initial 12.5 RC to a Ventura beta version of firmware. Now that's not going to be the end of the world, but the problem is, is that this is not going to update until you update to Mac OS Ventura or you do a DFU restore. So that's why I keep an eye on this stuff. If you, your Mac is having issues and you're wondering why, well, look at the firmware version. Well, wait a minute, I installed that RC version and now I'm on a Mac OS Ventura beta version of system firmware and maybe that's causing problems. So that's why I keep an eye on those versions. 
Apple released a full installer for the 12.5.1 update, which is always great, especially for the smaller point release updates. And they did release an M1, M2 IPSW restore file for Apple Configurator 2. Now, I wanted to call out an interesting situation that happened later in the day. This is the software update binary command that will list all the full installers that are available for, from Apple. Notice how there is two versions of the 12.5.1 full installer. The first one was available right away at 12 Central Daylight Time, but later in the afternoon around 4.30, Apple added the 12.5.1 update to the beta software update catalog, and then this full installer came up. Now notice they're exactly the same. I checked them out. I don't understand why there's two of them listed there, so I just wanted to mention that. So if you saw that, it didn't throw you off if you're trying to download a full installer. Now let's take a look at the patch notes for the 12.5.1 update. Now you notice here, there's not that much here. And that's because we're getting to the near end of the macOS Monterey new features and enhancements because macOS Ventura is only about a month and a half away. So we're gonna start to see the Monterey updates focus around small minor bug fixes and major security issues or vulnerabilities. So to get the more information about the 12.5.1 update, we got to go to the security section and then we can go down here and look at the specific fixes around the update. So when we scroll down here, we can see that there's two CVE security vulnerabilities. So the first one is around kernel, which is at the highest level of the operating system. And we'll read that impact here. An application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. There's two major issues here. The first one is that the fact that this is an arbitrary code execution. And what that means is that the attacker has the ability to execute any code or command on the target Mac device without the owner's knowledge. The problem is, is that this is also a zero day, meaning that this issue was already out there before Apple could fix it, meaning that Apple is aware of this already happening and they're now putting a stop to it. So it's possible that it could be already on a certain amount of machines actively exploiting this now. So the update needs to be installed on those machines to stop that or prevent more machines from being affected. So let's look at the second one, WebKit. WebKit's around Safari. So this process impact is the maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. And Apple's also aware that this one has been actively exploited. So two big issues, and this is why Apple will put out these point releases here to be able to handle these type of security updates and protect the Macs. So now that gets us off into a situation where we need to talk about macOS Big Sur and macOS Catalina. So why wasn't there an associated update for Big Sur and Catalina? And that puts us back into the situation. I called this out on Twitter. Back when 12.3.1 was released, there was vulnerabilities for Big Sur and Catalina that were not released. Apple did not release security updates to fix these vulnerabilities until the next round of security updates. So that puts us in the same situation here. Is Big Sur and Catalina vulnerable to these CVEs? Maybe they're not. But if they are, that puts users of Catalina and Big Sur in a tough spot. What do you do? Well, we don't really know. Again, it's possible that these do not affect those operating systems, but it also is. To be absolutely sure, I make the recommendation here, you should always be on the latest macOS version, which obviously right now is Monterey, and then you will be protected. Apple keeps the eye on the latest operating system for all security updates. They usually have been pretty good with patching the previous two, but if you want to be absolutely secure, you got to be on the latest operating system. Now to fix the WebKit exploit, Safari was updated to 15.6.1. So that's a way to tell you that you're covered. Now in Catalina and Big Sur, Safari is released as a separate update from the security update. So Apple could still drop a version of Safari for those updates tomorrow to fix those. So we'll have to keep an eye out and I'll keep you guys updated on that.
Let's take a quick look at some benchmark scores from Geekbench 5. On 12.5 on this system, we had a 1736 on a single core and a 7709 for the multi. And on the 12.5.1 update, we had 1738 same and a 7354, so a little bit less. And again, I do run these scores, so if we do see a major shift, we might want to take a closer look at the update, but we're pretty close here. And you can follow me on Mr. McIntosh blog on Geekbench to view all the previous scores. Now, I also wanted to check something else new that I've had a couple of people reach out to me about, and that is the battery condition health. Now, you're only going to see this on M1 or M2 devices. This is not listed on Intel. So you'll see the maximum capacity here at 100% on this M1 MacBook Pro. But if you look there on Intel, you'll see that they do not have that listed under the battery. So let me move this up so you can take a quick look at that. You'll see the difference here where you do not see the maximum capacity. Only the battery condition here is normal. Now. What we're tracking here is this maximum capacity. And Apple says over a thousand charge cycles, you should not go under 80% capacity. Now, what people have said is, is that they've seen this capacity change between updates. Now it should not, this should remain the same, but we can keep track of that and see if we can see any differences. Now on this particular update, we should still see 100% on that battery and it should not change. And that should be the case and it is. Now keep in mind, this machine hasn't seen much use. That's why we're at 100%. You might see 98, 97, 95, 94. Don't worry, that's normal. That's what's gonna happen with batteries. So don't be alarmed if you see that capacity go down. Now, if you're seeing under 80%, 70, 60, that might be something to look at, but that would have to be some serious use or there's a defect in the battery. Now let's talk about open core legacy patcher and the 12.5.1 update for unsupported Macs. The good news is the 12.5.1 update installs just fine with open core legacy patcher, the latest version 0.4.10. There should not be any new releases because there's no issues that came up with the initial testing. Macola already tested against Kepler and gave it the AOK -okay all clear. I tested it on this demonstration Mac today, which is a early 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro and there's no issues and it works really well. That's great because again, 12.5 did have some issues with the Kepler card and those were all fixed in the 0.4.10 update. So you shouldn't have any worries on updating. Remember, like I mentioned in, in my 4.10 update video, before you update Mac OS Monterey or Mac OS Big Sur, take a look at the GitHub page first to make sure that there's no notes. Macola updated the GitHub releases page for 4.10 to mention that there's no issues with 12.5.1 in here along with 12.5. Under 4.09 you would have saw that there was a warning here and you would have wanted to hold off a little bit. So that's going to be the way that you guys should check before you install a Monterey or Big Sur update and you have Open Core Legacy Patcher. Now I wanted to talk about Mac OS Ventura and a possible event for the iPhone, which is coming up early September, is the rumor anyway. And what they're saying, for example, Mark is saying from Bloomberg, is that they're going to put, Apple's going to push back iPad OS and Mac OS Ventura into October because they're working on Stage Manager. Now that would be great because Ventura does need some work. System settings need some work. Or there's some other things that need some work on the enterprise side. And that extra time would give Apple some time to refine Ventura before launch, especially for Stage Manager. That aligns for a second event. So they'll have an event that will focus on, again, this is all just theory right now. And what I'm thinking is going to happen, we're going to get an iPhone event that's just for an iPhone, right? Then there could be an October event that could focus on Mac and iPad and iPad OS. So we could see a new iPad, iPad OS will release. Then we could probably see the Mac Pro, which we've been waiting two years for, which will complete Apple's two year transition of Apple Silicon. And we'll see Mac OS Ventura there for release dates. That's what we're looking at for a possibility of release schedule for Mac OS Ventura and the new Mac Pro. And I can't wait to see that when it's released. Should you install the Mac OS Monitor 12.5.1 update? 
I think you know the answer to that question because you know that I'm big on security to keep your Mac secure. And the answer is yes. Now, before you do it, you know, the other thing that I always tell you to do, make sure you have a backup or at least two copies of backups before you run any OS update, whether you're on a supported Mac or an unsupported Mac. So if something does go wrong and you're in a small percentage, you're a OK because you got all your files backed up. And that's my 12.5.1 update video. Thanks for watching. If you stuck around all the way to the end, you realize that for a small update, we actually went over a lot of different things that was related to this update. I appreciate you sticking around and watching. You can follow me on Twitter at classic two underscore Mr. Mac for all the latest Mac news. You can click on this Mr. Macintosh logo here to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And I want to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. You guys are absolutely fantastic and I really appreciate you and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks.